Good morning, everybody. Kimo Sabi here, coming at you with another video. So, this one's off of Vancouver Sun webpage. A write up by Matt Robinson, Lori Colbert, and Stephanie IP, updated September 10th, 2018, with the topic of Abraham Ali. 28, charged with first-degree murder of Burnaby teen Marissa Shen. The man arrested in charge with the 2017 murder of Burnaby teen Marissa Shen arrived in Canada as a refugee from Syria just months before she was killed, says police. Abraham Ali, 28, was arrested without incident Friday in Burnaby, where he lives, and later charged with the first-degree murder. According to the Integrated Homicide Investigation Team, Ali did not appear to know Shen, and Shen did not know Ali, said Superintendent Donna Richardson, the officer in charge of IHIT. Police believed from the start that the murder had been random, and Richardson and investigators still hold that belief. Shen was reported missing after she failed to return home by 11 p.m. on July 18, 2017. Police launched a search using GPS to track her phone. The 13-year-old's body was found in a wooded area in Burnaby Central Park early the next morning. Investigators became aware of Ali two weeks ago, Richardson said. By that time, they had identified and eliminated more than 2,000 persons of interest. Ali was not known to the police, and he does not have a criminal record. Richardson would not say how police identified him as a suspect. Ali is a Syrian national and a permanent resident of Canada who came to the country 17 months ago. Richardson said she did not know whether he was a privately sponsored or government assisted refugee, but because he has family in but believed he has family in Burnaby and was employed. So he was probably sponsored by the government or some kind of National Church Association or something like that. They just don't want to say that. Looks bad on Vancouver, doesn't it? A law enforcement source who was not authorized to speak publicly said at IHIT has asked the Canada Border Services Agency for more information about Ali. That source confirmed Ali did not arrive at the Port of Canada to claim asylum. A spokeswoman for the Immigration and Refugee Board was unable to find records of any public proceedings in which Ali was involved. The Shen family released a statement through police following news of the arrest. We would like to take the opportunity to thank the public for all of their ongoing support and concern for us this past year. We are aware that so many people reached out to the police to provide information and we are so grateful for that in the statement set red. We would like to thank the police for all their hard work and specifically IHIT for their perseverance. Ali is scheduled to appear in the Vancouver Provincial Court on Friday at 9.30 a.m. Chris Freshen, Director of the Immigrant Services Society of BC, which helps Syrians settle here, said he did not recognize Ali's name. He says there are about 3,500 Syrian refugees living in 69 different BC communities and he knows of no others who have been in trouble with the police. He called Shen's murder a horrific, unfortunate case, but said it shouldn't cast suspicion on all refugees. When a tragedy like this happens, it can and does impact public opinion, and it's unfortunate that entire communities can be whitewashed by the horrific alleged behavior of one individual. We have found the vast, vast majority have left all of that behind, the trauma of the war, and just want to live a peaceful and productive life in Canada. Paying taxes and supporting their children, if they have children, in school, Preston said. He said the Vancouver ISS office has a Vancouver police officer who comes regularly to meet with the refugees and ensure them that law officials are here to support them in Canada. It has been shown that immigrants are statistically less likely to commit crimes than others, but as in everything else, there are always exceptions, said Olga Stachova of Mosaic, the 
Multilingual Orientation Services Association for Immigrant Communities. She is concerned that the focus on the suspect's immigration status will erode the goodwill and generosity that Canadians have for refugees. Abraham Ali is accused of a terrible crime, but if he is guilty, he is not representative of all refugees, nor of all Syrians, she said. Of course he's guilty. They're arresting him. And, you know, he, he murdered a 13-year-old girl. Yeah, he's guilty. Why would you even put that in there, Vancouver son? Come on. I know sometimes we're all going to cover ourselves for when we're narrating something or writing something up. But say it how it is. <sighs> it's just crazy. And then we have a little related uh, bonus bit here. One year later, and police still have no suspects in ner uh, murder, even though they got the guy now. New video shows 13-year-old Burnaby homicide victim was seen hours before the body was found. The whole thing raises big issues of security at Burnaby Central Park. Questions linger over slain teen. A letter posted online by representatives of the Syrian community in Canada called the murder despicable. At this moment of deep sadness, we earnestly join all Canadians in mourning and hope that this terrible incident won't result in backlash against refugees. The federal liberal said in 2015 that the government would give top priority to assistance Syrian families, women at risk, and members of the LGBT community, and that single men would only be permitted entry if they were LGBT or accompanying their parents as part of the family unit. However, these categories did not apply to privately sponsored refugees, a process that could include single men. Immigration Minister Ahmed Hassan's office did not respond to a request for comment, but in the statement, an official with the department said every refugee undergoes a robust multi-layered screening before being allowed to enter Canada. Each has a medical exam and a security check to ensure that they have not committed serious offenses such as sudden cure. Overseas security screening includes collecting biographical information and biometrics such as fingerprints and digital photos, which are checked against immigration law enforcement and security databases, Kira said. The RCMP Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Criminal Investigation in BC, Eric Stubbs, described Shen's case as one of the biggest, if not the biggest, murder investigation that IHIT has had, and in terms of the hours and efforts put in by officers and the leading edge investigative techniques used, the investigative path was extraordinary and I couldn't be more proud. More than 1,300 residents were canvassed, more than 600 interviews were conducted, and more than 1,000 hours of video footage were reviews, reviewed as part of the investigation. A website launched to solicit tips from the public received 80,000 visits. About nine months after Shen's murder, the RCMP's behavioral scientist group developed a criminal profile of the unknown killer. That person likely lived near Central Park at the time of the murder, and they may have started to behave strangely after her death. Perhaps they moved from the area, avoided the Central Park, withdrew from activities, missed appointments, made surgical gestures, or no, sorry, made suicidal, suicidal gestures or attempts, increased drug or alcohol use, or had heavy interest in media coverage of Shen's murder. Chief Superintendent Diane Ber Berlier, the officer in charge of the Burnaby RCMP unit, said Shen's murder shook the community and led to people questioning their safety in local parks. She offered her condolences to Shen's family. While I understand that there is some relief at the announcement of an arrest, I am mindful of the devastating loss that they have suffered. So there you have it, everybody. Um, not particularly an enjoyable piece of information to receive, um, but it's important, and it's important to know, um, you know, that um, as young children or having young children, um, um, to um, to some degree, to arm them with uh, defensive capabilities, whether that is uh, a can of mace or well, tasers and things that require to press a button and give me stolen from you and use against you. So, um, yeah, I'd say uh, maybe there should be some kind of um, uh, a rally or some kind of a program where young girls and stuff 
even young boys, but young children um, are, are equipped and uh, trained uh, with defensive capabilities in school. And so they know um, when a potential uh, predator or bad person is um, following them or has bad intentions towards them. Um, I think a lot of these situations can be avoided if we properly equip our children with defensive capabilities or at least the knowledge to know um, when to run or when to uh, call help or you know just go to the first taxi taxi and you know go home or whatever just um, or to go somewhere safe um, you know wherever you are but um, of course it's a tragedy and it's terrible that any one person has to get murdered or whatever else but so blessings and uh, you know goodness upon the family and you know stay strong Kimosabi here it would be cool if you subscribe and uh, leave some comments if you feel compelled to on this one I know it's not a very um, rosy topic but important nonetheless so thanks a lot everybody appreciate you sticking with me and we'll see you in the next one.